Hello, everybody. Tim Adams here again for another Hangout on Air. We're going to be talking about church. I'm sorry. We're going to be talking about projection display technologies today. Uh, there's a lot of acronyms flowing around, uh, particularly now, uh, in the projection world, as it were. So you got DLP, you got LCD, LCOS, you got this new LED laser. What's going on? You know, how do I make sense of it all? So we're gonna, just going to kind of break it down. And um, I got a kind of a short little presentation, just kind of walk us through the acronyms, walk us through some of the technology, and just kind of explain some of the stuff. Um, that should take, you know, just a few minutes, and then we'll get into some Q&A. So with that being said, uh, let me pull up my window here that has all my super-duper handy information. And while I'm working on that, probably one of the more readily identifiable projection technologies uh, that's on the market today is what's called DLP. And that stands for, anybody know? No, just kidding. All right, it's digital light processing. And uh, what it is is um, basically what looks like a mirrored surface on a chip. They call that the DMD or the digital mirror device, I believe is what that stands for. And it's made up of thousands of tiny little mirrors um, that are on even smaller actuators, and they actually turn the mirrors away or towards the light source. And um, some of the advantages that you get with uh, this particular display technology is you get better color accuracy. And one of the ways that they do that, now that I have this pulled up here, is because they, go, they run uh, the light basically through a color wheel. And what I'm showing you here is a three chip DLP. And I couldn't find a single chip DLP diagram that I really liked uh, that wasn't like just full of just like circuit level drawings and all that and just really confusing so um, bear with me so here we have a blue chip that's uh, or you know light source you have a green chip and you have a red chip so RGB red green blue um, those are your primary colors and that's where we get um, the millions of colors colors concept so these are going through uh, dichroic mirrors so they pass certain color frequencies and they absorb others so, and then they bounce off a mirror, go through a lens, um, and this is your DMD right here, okay? So, what they're doing is all the reds are being reflected, and every, all the pixels, all the little mirrors around them are actually turned away from the light. And so those would be, um, you know, you can imagine that this white would be black, okay? That would be pixels being turned off, or each mirror is responsible for a pixel in, in your resolution. Uh, in your image. So because they're white, then it's just white that's being uh, projected here. So you can see how this kind of works. Um, and it gets uh, more complicated than this. It gets simpler than this as we go through the technologies. And let me pull up my notes here. So going back to the pros of DLPs, um, you get better contrast ratios and shattered shadow detail. Uh, and basically, your, your black level is more realistic to the, um, the source, let's say. So you get that much richer blacks, much richer uh, shadows, but not at the cost of detail in the shadows. And so most of your digital projectors, uh, digital cinema projectors, are using DLP technology uh, for exactly this reason. Uh, they generally tend to be quieter than the other um, projection options. And because you have such small spaces in between the pixels, because remember, that, that DMD chip is made up completely of mirrors. Um, and so the space in between is probably measured in like microns. Um, you get a very smooth image, even in lower resolution projectors. Um, it is often thought of as providing the best overall image quality for under $10,000. Um, and it's also completely mechanical um, 
technology in that it doesn't use an organic material like LCD does and because of that your image won't degrade over time. Now obviously with any piece of electronic gear you need to maintain it um, and, and make sure that those actuators are, are performing properly and that kind of thing and you know you, you contact the manufacturer if they don't tell you in the documentation what that maintenance uh, should look like and, and what those you know like with a car you know every 3,000 miles or every so often you change the oil right same kind of concept you have recommended service intervals and as long as you hit those then your projector is going to perform very well uh, it also has the best color uniformity uh, and then less maintenance because the DMD chip is sealed so dust cannot get into it um, and there's no filters which is kind of a nice thing. I don't know how many of you have had to clean out clogged air filters on a projector, but depending on the manufacturer and the design of the projector, that can be uh, somewhat of an arduous process. Sometimes you actually have to get up to the projector, completely unmount it in order to access the filter, clean it, and then remount it and re-aim it. And that just becomes a really nasty little, little process especially if it's, you know, 20 feet in the air. Uh, some of the cons for DLP, they do tend to be more expensive than their LCD counterparts um, in terms of, you know, apples to apples, in terms of resolution and brightness. Uh, and then we have this thing called the rainbow effect. And I'll be honest, I didn't do a lot of research into this, um, but it is an issue that is known to exist. And... It's really just kind of you see a rainbow of colors uh, instead of color uniformity. So while it is kind of rated as the best in color uniformity, you do have this issue that is known to happen in certain circumstances. So uh, this is kind of similar to CMOS imagers in video cameras and DSLRs uh, where when you're in fast motion, vertical objects tend to look tilted. Um, and that has to do with the, the uh, what they call the rolling shutter. And, you know, we're not going to get into that. You can look that up. There's plenty of resources that explain what that is. But um, overall, I would say that DLP is, is likely your best option. Now, let's move on to LCD, uh, which is liquid crystal display. And there we go. So this should be up on our screens. Yep, okay, good. So here you have your lamp source, and then you have a prism that separates the color into wavelengths. Okay, once again, red, green, blue. Um, and then that goes, and these are actually not just color filters, they're actually also LCD panels. So I'm not going to get into the actual technology of how an LCD is uh, is formed simply because I've got it here somewhere it's really confusing to be to be perfectly honest um, yeah I I found it somewhere but um, yeah it's it has to do with like five or six different layers and and how these things work and um, I'll put a link in the event after we're done to kind of for those of you that are really curious about how an LCD works and how it's made um, you can read to your heart's content but um, it has, yeah I'm not gonna go into that so basically you're separating them out going through the LCD panels you're recombining them into uh, what we call a homogenated or homogeneous image and then that goes out to the lens and then out to the screen. So this one, this diagram is much easier to comprehend and um, here's the DLP again so here's your color filter kind of gives you an idea, your mirrors, your lens and out it goes. So LCD is one of if not the first what they call micro display technology uh, that came out and it's still very very widely used um, simply because it's been around for so long it's a very um, reliable technology in that you know it has quite the history um, still used in large effect in um, in our phones our smartphones and our laptops 
uh, TVs, and that, you know, they're, they're just everywhere. Uh, some of the pros, they tend to be very bright. Uh, they have great color saturation. Uh, they have a lot more features than, say, comparably priced DLP options. Um, and then the lower brightness projector models tend to have longer life lamps. Uh, which is always good because if you've ever had to replace a um, or buy a projector lamp, you know that you know hundreds of dollars, anywhere from you know a couple hundred dollars to north of seven hundred or more. You know it's kind of adds to that total cost of ownership <laughs> issue. Um, some of the cons of LCD or liquid crystal display are dead pixels are common. Um, I'm not sure how many of you have actually bought a projector or bought a TV or a monitor. Uh, or experienced a dead pixel, but it's really annoying. Um, as resolutions increase, pixel size decreases. Um, it tends to be harder to notice them, but they are still there. And you know, th these are due to vagaries in the production process and possibly some quality assurance issues. But uh, it also seems to be inherent in the technology. So you know, just just realize that. Contrast ratios, shadow detail, and overall black levels are just not as good as DLP models uh, or DLP projectors. Uh, you also have something called convergence issues. And because you have, uh, typically an LCD projector will have three LCDs, like, like we're seeing, you know, a red, green, and a blue. If those are misaligned even a little bit, then you have issues um, with what that looks like you know, how the colors are represented in the final image. So I haven't personally seen that, um, you know, in particular in projectors. That was, in my research, I was kind of surprised to see that uh, pop up as an issue. But, you know, it is uh, apparently an issue that, that a lot of people have experienced. Um, the other big issue is, as I kind of made mention of before, LCD panels are organic. So the LCD, the liquid crystal part of that, is made of an organic material. And because of that, uh, that degrades over time, which in turn reduces your image quality. So an LCD projector, uh, or an LCD display, you know, let's just call it that, is going to lose its image quality over time. Now, you know, I have a 37-inch Vizio TV that I use as my computer monitor, and I've had this thing since probably... 2010, and I'm starting to notice some dead pixels now. It's a refurbished unit that I picked up, um, but as far as image quality, I haven't seen any difference. So I don't know what kind of time frame uh, LCD panels take to start degrading, but I have not, again, personally experienced that. But it apparently it's a, enough of an issue that people need to to be made aware of it. And then finally, for LCD, uh, color uniformity is just not as good uh, as DLP. So now we're going to get into what is arguably the most confusing and just strange technology <laughs> that I've come across, um, and, and that is LCOS. And that stands for liquid crystal on silicon, and I don't think I actually have a display f or a, a diagram for that. So let me come back to the Hangout. We'll stop sharing. And there we go. Okay. So it's kind of a hybrid between LCD and DLP. That's the best that I can explain it. <laughs> uh, some of the differences. Uh, is that it provides a very smooth film-like image due to its pixel structure. Now, how the pixel structure is different than LCD and DLP, I don't know. Um, I wasn't able to find much information on that, and being able to translate extremely technical information into layman's terms doesn't always work that well, and I did not want to try. So, again, I'll be putting links uh, in the on the event page after this is uh, after this is done so hopefully if you want to take that on feel free um, but it also has great color saturation and accuracy uh, and it tends to be very bright just like LCD so it kind of takes the best of both worlds however it is still using 
in organic materials. So the image quality over time will degrade, same as LCD. You tend to have um, dead pixels, same as LCD. Uh, but for some reason, with LCOS, they tend to be more noticeable. Not sure why. Um, something inherent in the technology is, is what I've found uh, in the research that I've done, but it's just inherent. So, uh, And then they tend to be pricier, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they just don't have a big part of the market. Um, they never made the splash that DLP uh, or LCD did, and as a hybrid technology, uh, I think a lot of people are just confused about what exactly it is and how it's better and how it's different and why it's worth more. So now we get into um, some of the more exciting things that have been happening in recent years, and that is with the light source. So for as long as I can remember, projectors have used uh, HPL lamps, high-pressure lamps. And uh, be they tend to be fairly pricey, as, as I've mentioned before, but now we're starting to see what we call solid-state light sources come out. Um, primary among them, LED. Um, now, LED is pretty cool. Um, you know, it's, it's cool to the touch, it runs cool, it doesn't consume as much power, um, and they're, because they're using it in projectors, and because of the inherent benefits of LED, there's no warm-up or cool-down period. Now, I don't know about you, but when you run a traditional HPL-based um, or lamp-based projector, and let's say you've had it on for an hour, hour and a half, you usually got to wait a couple of minutes for the fan to cool the lamp down enough before you unplug it and pack it up and, and move on. Uh, and that's to protect the lamp. At least that's what I've always been told. With LED, you don't have to do that. You're done with your presentation, you turn it off, unplug it, pack it up, you're ready to go. So that's kind of an inherent benefit for people that are on the move, like people who present all the time. Um, for a church situation, uh, if you're a mobile church, you don't have to wait either, which is great, you know. Um, nothing wrong with that. And the issue that, that we're running into with LED is the brightness. Um, there's just... There are constant improvements. If you follow LED uh, theatrical lighting, then you know that there are more and more LEDs coming out that are consuming more power, yes, um, but you have things like 100 watts consumed that will give you an equivalent of, say, a 4,000 uh, lumen projector, for example. So I don't know if that's an actual, you know, apples to apples comparison, but, you know, I'm just throwing numbers out there. But you also have LEDs, or the advantage of having an LED-based light source in a projector is that they're designed to last as long as the projector lasts. So you're not replacing the LED, ever. You know, I mean, these things are rated for 10,000, 20,000 hours. And the nice thing about an LED is that it's not like a lamp where it just burns out, right? it'll just get dimmer and dimmer over time. And you can choose to either buy a new unit or you can actually repair it and replace the LED. So as far as total cost of ownership, I think having an LED light source is going to be the way to go in the future. Um, and then the final benefit is that because it doesn't run as hot, you don't need the loud fans to cool the light source. And so LED projectors tend to be much, much quieter, which, yeah, it can be an issue. I'll be honest. I, I work a lot of live events, and I work with a lot of high-powered projectors, and they tend to have a certain noise level that if it weren't there, it would be nice. I mean, let, let's just say that. So now we're going to get into lasers, and this is what I'm really, really most excited, um, excited about to share with you guys because um, I started seeing my first, or the first advertisements for lasers, uh, projectors from Sony, actually back, well, I don't know, I want to say after NAB last year. And I was really excited because the, the inherent benefits of, of laser um, are kind of unknown. And I just like being on the on the cutting edge and and that kind of thing. So 
and I like to see the industry innovating and, and doing stuff like that. So there's my Hangout window. So we're going to share this. Oh, dear. Where did it go? Got to find my screen again. There we go. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys. There we go. All right, so this would be... And there's, there's three kind of subcategories of laser projection. The first is true laser. And that is the light source, all the light energy is coming from lasers. And so here you kind of see how that would work. So you have a red, a green, and a blue laser. Kind of cool. Um, now what's amazing about this particular version of laser projection, let's say, um, is that the theoretical brightness is so much higher than what even lamp-based projectors uh, can provide. So I've seen, I think the highest lumen count I've seen on a lamp-based projector is 30,000 lumens, which is ridiculously bright. Okay. Barco, which is a high-end laser manufacturer, I'm sorry, high-end projector manufacturer, um, among other pieces of equipment, has just released a 60,000 lumen laser-based projector, um, really aimed at the digital cinema market, and you can imagine that that costs ridiculous amounts of money. But the fact that it's all laser-based is pretty darn cool. Um, and it's still, I think, too early to tell what you know the long laundry list of benefits versus um, detriments are. But um, as time goes on, you know those will be more forthcoming. Some of the initial drawbacks to lasers um, is that they do consume a lot of power um, because, and it's not necessarily to power the laser; it's actually to cool the projector enclosure. Um, because it does tend to generate a fair amount of heat. Um, and then they have this thing called the speckle effect. And I'll see if I can pull that up uh, for you guys. There, there was an image, but um, I thought I had pulled up. But this will just... Um, yeah, so this is kind of an example of laser speckle. If you've ever had a laser pointer, you're familiar with this. Um, and this tends to be an issue. Um, now, some of the manufacturers are putting in what's called a de-speckle filter, so they're somehow addressing this. Um, so it, it sounds, those are the only two drawbacks that I could find to lasers. Um, and again, I think it's because it's so new that um, there's just not enough kind of real-world experience for, for people to, to rely on. So the second category of lasers is, I forget what they call it, let's see, uh, it's laser phosphor, that's right, okay, so you have a blue laser shining through a yellow phosphor, which then creates green, um, but you also have blue, in that, because it's a blue laser, and so you have this dichroic mirror here that separates the yellow and the blue, and then um, you have this other dichroic mirror that actually takes that yellow, pulls the green out of it, and that provides the green, um, and then you also have uh, red that's being pulled out, and uh, that's what gives you your RGB. So you can see that this is fairly complicated, um, but that's how they are pulling that, and a laser phosphor projector, that category is defined as one color channel of the red, green, blue is, um, is being created by going through a phosphor surface. So not much more to say on that. Uh, and then finally we have the hybrid in which one color channel is being created by an LED. So you can see that we have kind of a similar thing going on here, blue laser uh, going through a green phosphor, uh, which then provides the, um, you know, a separation here. So we have a, a 
blue section of this wheel that reflects um, or transmits blue light through, and then the rest of it is green, which reflects back through to to here. And then, um, interestingly enough, laser and LED are not competitor uh, display technologies to DLP, LCD, and LCOS. They're actually light sources. And so a lot of the laser products are actually using uh, DLP technology uh, for all the inherent benefits. So that is more or less my presentation. I told you it was only going to take a few minutes. So with that, I will stop the sharing. I will unwhite box myself. And let's open it up to questions. Hit me with what you got, guys. Nobody has any questions. Uh, I got a question. I know the LEDs don't burn out, but after the 20,000 hour, are they replaceable? I would imagine that they are. Um, I can't actually say yes or no to that. I, I didn't do that level of research. Um, mm -hmm. But as the conversation goes on, I can certainly uh, try and look that up. No, well, I know two years ago when we were thinking the first time I upgraded, they were coming out, I think, Sanyo or maybe Sony had one. And it, it was a long lifetime, but I, I started looking, but then I got sidetracked. I never did go back to find out what happens after that time. That's a, that's a long time, 20,000 hours. If you figure, you know, four, four to five hours, say 20 hours a month, you know, that's, right. that's, not, that's a long time, you know. Mm -hmm. It's true. It really is. Um, and, you know, a, let's say a conference room in a, in a business, right, is probably going to get more use out of their projectors on a weekly basis than the average church. Oh, yeah, not even close. Other questions? Um, mm -mm. A good way to go, though. You don't have to climb and change that bulb. Yeah, that is, <laughs> that's a nice, really nice benefit. Or or the filter, you know, if if you get yeah. that, which is really really nice. Yeah. Yeah, I had to do all that at our church a couple of years ago, and that was a pain trying to get there with a extension ladder to get to it. Right. But yeah. Oh goodness. Oh, good. Okay. So, yeah, like I said, laser and even LED is, as a light source is really so new that you're, I'm only really seeing an LED light source in, say, a Pico projector, you know, something that you fit in your pocket. It's yeah, like it's 200. Um, so it, it's a little disappointing, but I know that the manufacturers are working on it. Um, I don't think that it's going to be that much longer before we start seeing them roll out um, to, you know, roll out to, to a broader base. You know, something in the 3,000 to 8,000 lumen range. Um, I've read, you know, I've seen in my research that they are available, but I, I'm not being able to find them at all. Um, because, you know, outside of the pocket projectors, so, I mean, I'll I'll just go to B and H Photo real quick and see what I can find. But I'm not really holding much hope out. And and a lot of it is because it is so new. Number one and number two, uh, it's just because DLP really has the market. You know, there are LCD projectors out there, but they are rapidly losing market share. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like B&H doesn't even have a, an option for, for like, display technology. It is, it's like, it's just what it is, what it, it is what it is. So there's a 3 LCD, DLP, that one doesn't tell me. That's helpful. It's only, um, so yeah, I mean, what, what's been your experience, guys, with, um, with projectors, what are what are some of the pros and cons that you've experienced or or witnessed? Mm -hmm. 
Well, we've uh, used uh, we've used both uh, LCDs and DLPs, and quite frankly, because we we've done video for ten years, uh, live video, so. DLP, in my experience, seems like it works better for live video than uh, LCD does. LCD, at least 10 years ago, seemed like it was better for graphics from the computer than for full-color video from a camera. The, just Maybe it's the color, maybe it was the black levels, where since the if you turn the mirror away, you get totally black, black. Uh, that's going to seem brighter just because the black is so much darker, just by contrast. So um, that was my experience, other than we did have one uh, issue with a particular manufacturer no longer making the lamps for the projectors, but that was something totally different. I am excited about these display technologies with either the lasers or the LEDs where you won't be uh, buying new lamps all the time because they're ridiculous in their price point. It's just, it's crazy that a lamp or a projector can cost such a high fraction of what a new projector costs. So sometimes you get to the point where a new projector at the same brightness costs and perhaps even a better resolution costs about what the lamp for your five-year-old projector costs, and that's just ridiculous in my opinion. Well, I agree. I, I absolutely agree. Um, it's nice... I mean, it's really an exciting time to be in church tech and, and just in that in that industry because so much is happening so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so here I'm on eBay. Um, I found a Barco projector, really nothing about it. Uh, it's seller refurbished. So it's a um, digital cinema projector with 5-star 3D and Dolby DSS 200 server and they it's refurbished and they want $49,995. Yep. So I, like I said there's oh view full description. Let's let's see what they have to say about this. So that's 9500 lumens, gentlemen. That's it. Oh. Uh. That's nuts. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that Barco unit is so far outside of even the largest church. Um, I, yeah, I just, you would be better off stacking your projectors and getting lower cost units, in my opinion, than going, going that route. But, yeah. you know, that's not their market either. No. So... But as far as the typical church, like, I don't think I've ever spec'd anything over 5,500 lumens. You know, a lot of it with projection is controlling your lighting, particularly the ambient lighting that's getting onto the screen, um, and then figuring out how big your screen is um, or needs to be based on the furthest viewing position so that it's easily readable. Um, you don't have to do so many tricks like bumping up the font size and, and that kind of thing of text that's on the screen just so people can read it. You know, that's just... I don't think that's a, a, a solid solution, but at the same time, I understand that if you're 70 feet away from, from your screen, you can't really afford to have a 33-foot wide screen. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Mm. So there are ways around that. You know, I've seen you take your furthest distance and you divide it by 1.5, I think dividing it by 2.0 or 2.5 to 3.0 is probably a little more realistic. But I've got 2015 <sighs> eyesight too, so I don't know if that if I'm slightly biased on that. Um, but you know, multiplying by that 
number leads you down a much more economical road. And I think if you have two screens, um, you know, that's better, and that, that means that you can go with smaller screens um, because you're duplicating the content. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I mean, a lot of it's subjective, but in terms of what technology is the best, you know, I still come, come down on the side of DLP. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can get a DLP with an LED light source, um, say in the next couple of years, we'll probably be seeing a huge jump in brightness. So, you know, I was able to find some LED uh, base projectors and even some Casio, who was the one that demoed the first laser hybrid, um, yeah. so laser LED hybrid, um, they've got tons of these, you know, laser hybrid projectors. And I think that even their highest one was like 3,000 lumens, and it was $2,000. So if you want to be on the cutting edge, by all means. But um, most of them are like sub-1,000 lumens. And I'm sorry, but even in a um, even in a home theater, you know, complete pitch black, I'm going to want brighter than that. So, and you know, a lot of it depends on the screen that you have as well. But I think for the money, at least for 2015, um, short of something groundbreaking coming out at just a ridiculous price point, like ridiculously good, I think um, DLP is going to be the way to go. Um, for probably the next two years would be my estimate. Um, you know, if you're looking at getting new projectors, I don't think there's anything wrong with going a lamp-based DLP. Still so, going to be a good picture. Well, yeah. yeah. Just not efficient. And you better have a spare bulb, a couple of spare bulbs. But besides that, you're good. It's true. It's very true. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, was that was that informative? Was it helpful? Did it help explain some things that introduce some things you didn't know about? Yeah. Yeah. The hybrid one. The first. The first hybrid one you talked about. I never heard of that one, but I started on a Epson S1 10 years ago. So, you know, 2004. So I ran that one for 10 years until it finally conked out on me. <laughs> what do you think, Mark? Uh, it's funny we're talking about that. I'm actually doing uh, three conference rooms right now at work. And then that's, I know it's a little different setup, but um, it's kind of the same concept. Uh, we're looking at engineers wanting to throw up on the screen the biggest real estate they can get. Uh, with the highest resolution they can get because they, they kind of just want to, you know, it's kind of different from a church uh, venue there. Uh, the resolution has to be there, and we just picked up some Optimas. Um, and uh, I, what I've noticed, and, and it's one of those learning curves, is that while I look at the projector, it can do 1920. Uh, that's fine. Uh, my learning co curve was, oh, we'll just throw a VGA cable on there, and it's like, well, why are we getting shadowing and projectors not performing? And to come to find out, that's their max. That's VGA's max peak is 13, and just by learning that, so it's like, well, we're gonna have to start running HDMI. Um, and that's kind of funny. We're going down this road tonight because uh, my other guy that I was trying to get on tonight, I have him just go out and look at our projectors. Uh, that we have at church, and they are HDMI, which is fine, but the highest they can go is 1280. So right. I'm like, you might as well stick with the VGA cables. We might as well save our money because we about just bought a bunch of HDMIs because I thought that the projectors, they were very expensive. I thought that they could do the, the higher res, um, and they can't. So I think that's some of it, too, is matching what you're going to, what you're throwing out uh, to what the projector can do and what it's rated at. Um, as well, making sure you have the the connection, uh, the right connections as well, and also too, we notice that VGA cables running over 20, 25, 30 feet, even for VGA, needed a booster in line, either a switch box that's is plugged in to keep that. Uh, we notice some shadowing effect if you didn't boost that VGA up to get a good solid signal. But um, it's kind of a, um, you know, they have changed and they have dropped their price so much. And that's the thing with projectors, too, is they all change constantly. And I think you're right. For about the two years, it's going to change again. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things where it's like 
for most small to medium sized churches a DLP 4000 lumen, 5000 lumen is, is probably going to be just fine. And I don't have a problem, you know, I, I spout off all the time. If you've watched these HOAs at all, you know that I'm big on not wasting money um, and, and good stewardship and all that. But I don't have a problem with making that investment in projectors right now um, because I know that just because a new technology comes out doesn't mean that you have to jump on that bandwagon. You know, I'm one of those guys that's like, you know what, let's let other people, let's let the trendsetters and, and the early adopters vet this thing and let them deal with it um, so that I don't have to. Because when I'm in church tech, I'm in a mission critical situation and I don't want to be on that front line not understanding why something's not working because it's brand new. You know, it's like when a new operating system comes out. I don't know about you, but I'm not the first one to download it. <laughs> I'll wait four months, thank you very much. I want to go from a working OS to a working OS, a stable OS. So um, other people, I'll let them deal with it. They have the time, they have the patience, whatever. Me, you know, I got a job to do, I got work to do, and I can't afford to be down. And I think a lot of churches operate like that, too. Um, you know, you can imagine you you get halfway through an audio install and you're at the weekend. Well, if your sound system doesn't work, are you going to have an effective church service? Probably not, right? Same principle applies. So that's kind of where I'm coming out. Uh, Charles? Yeah, I, I heard a couple of interesting points here that... Uh, probably we might want to call more attention to. Like one is, you know, how things change over time. Like back in 2008 when I bought the last projector, at that point in time, for whatever reason, don't ask me why, um, DLP projectors, the bulbs cost, had cost back at that point in time more than uh, LCD bulbs did for whatever reason. So in 2008, we went with an LCD projector. Uh, because the bulb replacement cost on a DLP projector was higher. I don't know if it was back in those days with the manufacturing. Some of the DLP circuitry was included with the bulb as well. I don't know. I do know uh, one of my previous employers I worked at, they were one of the earlier adopters of DLP, and there was a lot of reliability issues with DLP when it first came out. Like the DLP chips would just fail. I mean, it was bad when they first came out, but I agree with you now, you know, Tim, times have changed. DLP is probably the way to go, um, but Mark hit on another interesting point. You know, sometimes when you're out shopping for, 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 for projectors and you're looking at price point more than you are features, you might see this projector and go, wow, this price point is awesome, but then you dig into it a little deeper and you find out, well, it doesn't put up put out very much resolution, like maybe 800 by 600 is the max. Right. Or it could be the case that, you know, your cheaper projector, if you're shopping for a price point and not necessarily a feature set, you might find a projector that's got an awesome price, but then you go look to see how much their bulbs cost, and their bulbs are outrageous. You know, for the price of a bulb, you could buy another projector. Right. Um, it's kind of like, just like printers, you know, some printers out there, inkjet printers, you can buy an inkjet printer cheap, but by the time you buy the replacement ink cartridges, you could have bought a new printer. So, projectors or a laser jet. That. Yeah, or, or a laser jet, same sort of thing. Yeah. So, I mean, projectors, you got to be careful of that when you're going shopping for a projector. Is don't just mm -hmm. shop on price point alone. Look at feature set and maintenance cost. In other words, bulb replacement cost. If you're not looking at those two things and you're only looking at price point, you're going to end up wasting money somehow. Yeah. yeah, and and that that gets into this conversation of uh, TCO, total cost of ownership, and yeah, I mean you got to look at the feature set. It's got to match not only what you need now, but what you're going to need in the future. And that future question is really hard to answer if you don't have leadership in place that's casting a vision for the future. Um, and we talk about that a lot on these HOAs is that you know you need to know where you're going because if you don't you're just going to become stagnant and if you're in tech in a stagnant church 
you're going to get burned out really quickly because mm -hmm. you don't have you don't have really a journey at that point. You're you're kind of stuck in the rest area, if you will. You're not on the highway going towards a destination. Um, and I understand it's hard. Church leadership is hard. Um, there's a lot of things that are pulling at you. But I think one of the core things of any good church leader is being able to cast a vision and to inspire other people to go towards that vision. But yeah, total cost of ownership, it's not just the purchase price of the, of the piece of equipment. Um, in this case, the projector. You know, what are you going to need in addition to that projector just to get it to function on day one? You know, are you going to have to change over the signal cables, you know, from, say, VGA to HDMI? Are you going to need to... So basically, you track, you trace from source to destination every cable, every piece of equipment that signal goes through so that you really understand what needs to happen. So, for example... My church is a mobile church. We're on a VGA backbone right now, and we have um, two two outputs currently. Well, three outputs, but um, we have an output that goes to a what we call a full back monitor, a TV uh, at the stage, so they can the pastor can just see this the slides right in front of him. We have one that goes to the projector screen, and then we have another one that feeds our video recording. That's all VGA. It's all taken care of. We're looking at upgrading. Well, we want to go to HDMI because I'd like to start capturing in um, at least 720, if not 1080, so that we can upload in, in higher quality. So what does that mean? Okay, so that means HD out of the laptop. Okay, that means i got to split that HD, so probably HDMI, you know, um, or DVI would also do it. But let's just... Assume we're working with HDMI for this, for the sake of this example. Okay, so I got to split that HDMI three ways because I got the three, the same three outputs. Um, I got to get new extenders or balens because we're on VGA right now. I can use the same cable, the same Ethernet cable, but I can't use the extenders, so I got to replace those. Um, I got to get a new projector because it doesn't do HDMI or DVI, uh, and then I've got to get a new capture solution for the computer and I've got to get a new computer to handle HD. So you, you very quickly start to understand the f just the ripple effect of changing one thing mm -hmm. uh, in, your, in your system and how pervasive that influence can be. And that's what we're talking about, total cost of ownership. So there's that initial cost of switching everything over, all that equipment I just mentioned, but then you're right, you know, we need to have an extra lamp, a spare lamp on hand in case that one, the one that we have installed right now, goes out. Right? Mm -hmm. yep. So, you know, that's a couple hundred bucks, depending on, or a few hundred, depending on, on the projector that you have. Um, and then, you know, okay, well, the new projector is probably, for us, again, a mobile church, new projector is probably going to have a different shape. So we probably need a new case to store it in during the week. You know, and how long do we want this to last? Do we want this to last 10 years, 5 years? Okay, let's assume we go through one lamp every 18 months. Okay, do the math. What's the cost of that over time? You know, and so, mm -hmm. yes, it's a lot of work. But believe me, the church is going to thank you for it because when you tell them it's going to cost this much over the life of the projector, and when you're probably going to be in the ballpark because you did the research, okay? You always want to come in under, at or under what you tell them. Mm -hmm. So if you have to pad that in order to not go over, great, do that. You're not lying to them. You're just trying to protect yourself and them because the last thing you want to do is go over budget because then people start asking tough questions like, well, why did it do this? And did... You don't want to have to answer those questions. So just do the work up front Yes, it is work. I, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to say I do this for a living, but I do help churches think through these things, and it is kind of an education process. So think through it, do the research, make your presentation, and, uh, and I think everybody's going to be happier in the long run um, if, if you 
do that work up front. Wow, silence. No, well, everything you said was true. You got to do that, you know. So yeah, Charles, you're working with a single screen situation. Lahuan, you're single screen currently, looking to go to dual screen. Mark, mm -hmm. two. are you single screen? Two. Okay, dual screen. And yep. Paul, I, you're two screen, right? Three. Three. Oh. Yeah, we're three two. Oh, okay. we have a back one for the singers. Bloody show-offs. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, got one in the back that's lyrics only, and one on each side that are iMag, and they're the main screens. Okay, um, well, and I guess using that definition, we're two. Right, 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 right. So you have you have one in the back, and then you have a confidence monitor up front. Paul? Yeah, the, when I said in the back, I meant it's not a confidence monitor. It's a monitor that only shows lyrics to the congregation. It's um, diamond-shaped and it's masked diamond -shaped? off and stuff. It, yeah. yeah um, hmm. Originally, it was a 40 foot screen, um, but we've had some uh, changes in our church, and so we we've packed away the large 40 foot screen and replaced it with a small, probably 10 foot by 10 foot uh, diamond shaped screen that just projects lyrics and uh, motion back. And then we've got that's iMag with lyrics during worship. So. Well, the big screen you had before. I want to go to his church. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's take a picture so we, we can see that. <laughs> um, there might be one over at questcommunity.com. Here, I'll put the email address. Or the URL yeah. in the chat. So oh, there it is. Not, yeah, I probably on the main page. Playing around. Mm -hmm. So you basically took a square screen and just turned it 45 degrees. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's the new one. The if they've got a picture that shows uh, where that square is, the diamond-shaped square thing. If uh, the original screen went out to truss on each side and up to truss above it, so it's only very recently that all that's been removed. So probably right. in the last month or so. Nice. Excellent. Yeah, and the confidence monitor is actually a television on front row. So, uh, like a 50-inch plasma or 50-inch LCD, something like that. Right. Excellent. Well, guys, I think we're going to wrap this up. So, um, everybody, thanks for watching. And for those of you out there in Internet land, um, hope this was informative and helpful for you. And as always, if you have any questions, you can find us in... Uh, the Church Tech community on Google+, Plus, um, or the Avenus Church Tech, Church Mag, or Tech Applied. That's the other one. So, look forward to uh, hearing from you out there in the mysterious cloud that is the Internet. Um, and until next time, have a good week.